<laughs> Even so, it's like slightly I see people watching. Yeah. Hello <laughs> and welcome to this short and sweet live remote session. I'm Peter Livingston from AI Enterprises and we're a small environmental charity based here in Lopunach. Um, we're all about conserving wild flowers and plants and trees. Um, our speciality is Aspen. So I'm here with Gillian Steele, the creative director of Remote. And together we are going to give you an introduction into the common nettle and why potentially it's an important source of fibre for making clothing. Yeah, okay. So um, it really is a short and sharp um, journey of, through uh, nettles. And um, nettles have been around for a very long time. And in fact, we've um, had findings of fabric made from nettles from um, the end of the bronze period mm -hmm. and uh, Paleolithic times. Um, it's not something we find a lot of because um, it's biodegradable, which mm -hmm. is one of the mm -hmm. things that interests us mm -hmm. um, in nettles as a future fabri fabric, our future yeah. fibre. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to go through the process mm -hmm. very roughly from beginning to end. This is a process that could very much be refined mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. something to produce cloth which, which is very soft and durable mm -hmm. and beautiful. So. And we want to try and dispel the <laughs> idea of nettle fabric yeah, or nettle yeah. clothing being stingy yeah. or jaggy or anything like that. Yeah. So, so is there a, nettles always grown in Scotland then? Are they a yeah. native plant? So they've been around for a very long time and it's commonly understood that it was the Romans that brought it to mm -hmm. Britain. And there's a very strange story of the Romans using nettles to thrash themselves with, oh to keep warm. It's very sad. But, um, <laughs> must have been desperate. Yeah, they must have been very desperate. Um, so that's apparently uh -huh. what, um, why they were brought here. But yes, they have been around for a very long time and they grow all over the world, mm -hmm. including New Zealand. And there are three different types of nettle. There's common European nettle, the Himalayan mm -hmm. nettle, and Rami. I think those are okay. the three, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is just go through um, a short um, intro to it and we're going to look at some films from earlier on this year. You start harvesting the nettles from late summer time, so we'll look at that film now. So, they grow to about, you're looking for the tallest nettles really, they grow to about one and a half metres. And um, you really should be wearing sleeves, not bare sleeve like I am there. It's being a bit gung ho. And you cut right down at the very base of the stalk. And you should, the best thing to do is really to wear um, a leather glove. That's going to be the best way of protecting your hands from the stings. I've found um, to, um, to my pain that even if you wear rubber gloves or um, a plastic bag, mm -hmm. the stings actually, the stings in the nettle okay. still go through yeah. and you still get stung by it. They're glass, yeah. aren't they, the stings? They're like a little kind of, I almost think of them as being like fiberglass or uh -huh. something, they have yeah. that kind of thing. So they, I mean, they um, stand straight up on the stalk and on the leaves and the best way to get rid of them is just to use um, the leather glove and swipe down the length of the stalk and um, remove them that way. Okay, so I'm just going to show you that. Um, it's a very simple process. And that's it. It's really, really easy. Yeah. And that is done, um, you could go through a um, hundred stalks really mm -hmm. in a very short time. Yeah. And once you've done that, you can then handle the nettles and uh, all the, the stingers have been taken off okay, it. Okay, so without yeah. the gloves, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. from there, mm -hmm. you then, you can um, take the fibres from the bark from green. And one of mm -hmm. the advantages of that, that you get longer fibres. But the fibres of nettles are actually, they're pretty wonderful to begin with. They can mm -hmm. be as long as 50 millimetre long, so oh. they're pretty good for making yeah. yarn. So, um, so, so um, I mean, what's, what's difference between nettle and cotton. I mean, we all wear cotton now. We're used to wearing cotton. It seems to work as a as a fabric. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, why nettles? I mean, yeah, okay. So, um, nettles were traditionally used um, right up until about the sixteenth century, and it really mm -hmm. only got displaced because of the cotton industry. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. a small number of people invested in an industry, mm -hmm. 
and um, as a result today, you know, I get, I would guess that anybody who's watching this just now, if they look at what they're wearing, they're probably wearing a, co a combination of cotton and nylon. Synthetics, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, mm -hmm. nettle um, was used commonly and it was called the silk of the north, you know, it is not a rough yes, fibre, yeah. in fact it can make a very, very fine, fine material. soft fabric yeah. that's even finer and softer than mm -hmm. that from flax, mm -hmm. linen. So um, it can make a really lovely fabric. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it lost popularity then and it gained it again around about the First World War mm -hmm. um, in Germany when they couldn't get access to uh, cotton yeah. because Britain had about 90% of the cotton market. So the German government invested a lot mm -hmm. of time and effort into growing nettle mm -hmm. and um, finding mm -hmm. the right species and they made their uniforms. I think we might have a picture mm -hmm. of a uniform. Yeah, so there's a German uniform. Yeah, relatively modern times it was used for, to make. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there have been many designers since then. However, I'll go back to that once I've talked a little bit about the retting process. So retting comes from the word rotting, and it's basically what you're doing. Um, so you're taking your stalks and you're placing them in a vat of cold water. Mm -hmm. And after 24 hours, you pour out that water. And one of the wonderful things about nettle is it's got lots of byproducts, mm. unlike cotton. Yeah. So going back to cotton, one of the bad things about cotton is that it's become a monocrop for producing our clothing. Mm -hmm. Everything you're wearing is cotton or nylon, mm. as I say. And um, what cotton does as a crop is it, um, it takes a lot of water mm -hmm. and it takes an awful lot of pesticides in mm. order to grow it. Um, to so the standard that we expect. Impact, yeah. Yeah. So it's got a huge environmental impact, whereas nettles would have nothing like that impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So and it also has byproducts um, for medicine. I'm sure you had talked a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I mean, I've actually got a personal story about this because, um, I mean, I've suffered um, uh, from hay fever and allergies over many years. Uh, I've always shied away from taking antihistamines or kind of hormone-based uh, treatments. So I just happened to Google natural um, antihistamine and it came up nettles. Um, so I've actually been taking nettle pills genuinely for the last about year. And then, well, it seems to have worked. I mean, I have to say, I haven't actually been, been suffering too, too much at all from anything. So that's my own personal experience yeah. in nettles. And for me, it is a bit of a, a kind of wonder plan yeah. just from that. Yeah. So, it's, I mean, cotton has no byproducts. It actually has a lot of problems but um, I wouldn't be proposing that we completely do away with cotton mm -hmm. but look at a diversification. Mm -hmm. Anyway mm -hmm. back to retting. Yeah. So you place your stalks, your newly um, plucked stalks into water and we're going to look at a film made earlier this year when I did the retting process. So you're basically um, stripping the plant, you're placing it in the water, that water then becomes nitrogen rich and it already is a byproduct that can be used in the garden. Mm -hmm into water yep. plants you then place it in for a further week and that week is really the week in which the the outer um bark of mm -hmm. the stalk starts to decompose yep. so it's going to make it a lot easier for you to to start stripping mm -hmm. the bark off and strip the fibers um okay so you're in there for one week and then again you've got an even more nitrogen rich water that can be used in the garden and weighing it down with bricks to stop them from floating. Okay, so after that you then have your stalks and you dry them, leave them somewhere dry. If you're lucky enough to live in a country where it doesn't rain every other day, if not every day, then you could leave them out in the garden to dry mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you end up with stalks. Yes. Um, you then take the stalks and I'm going to maybe go up to the close-up camera, if I can. And you use your thumbnail. Can you see that? You need good nails for this job. Yes. <laughs> I guess you could use something else. But you're using basically your thumbnail. Yeah. The stalk. mentioned actually was that when, when you were taking the leaves off they could be used for tea of making. Of course, yeah, they, they could be used for tea making. Tea. Healthy, healthy tea. Nettle yeah. soup as well. Oh, you know course, what, nettle yeah. is actually a really good replacement yeah. for um, spinach. Mm -hmm. And before we started this evening you and I were talking about the fact that um, 
fibres aren't the only area in which we've been kind of mm. convinced to look abroad into mm. other areas to find them within food, you know, the, the mm -hmm. flavourings and um, other things that we use, like spinach, for example, mm -hmm. yeah. we can grow here, but we can also grow nettles, you yeah. know, it's a really good um, yeah. iron-rich thing. So a whole nettle autonomy. <laughs> yes, you could do. Okay, so the next thing you do is you kind of bend this over your finger, and that is basically the fibres coming off. So, we have someone else here today who I forgot to introduce, Sorley. So Sorley um, has got some experience of making nettle twine, so I'm going to get him to take one of these and see if he can get himself a piece of twine, thread a needle, and sew a line of stitching and a wee bit of fabric. Yep. That'll no keep pressure. Busy. No pressure at all. <laughs> Charlie so, actually makes nettle tea. He enjoys yeah. porridge and we've got nettles in our garden. So yeah. The nettle soup was pretty amazing. We had that and you really have to get nettle soup. The, the, gather the leaves when they're very tender mm -hmm. and young. Mm -hmm. But yes, lots of byproducts. Okay, so moving on from that, you then, once you've um, peeled off all your fibres, you will get something that looks a bit like this. And yes, it does look quite rough, but that's before the carding process, which Sorley is also going to help with. So carding is done using a set of these, a set of paddles with hundreds of little pins in them. You put your fibre on that. So just as you would with sheep's wool, presumably. That's right, it's exactly the same process, process yeah. as sheep's wool. And then... It's just softening the... Breaking it, breaking the you're, break, you're breaking it up and you're yeah. separating um, the woody pithy bits. Those are all the bits that are kind of flying off just now. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually you end up with something that is quite soft. Now I'm going to again leave this for Solly when he's finished doing that task to do a bit more carding. And in the meantime, we're going to have a look at um, some garments, some other garments and objects that have been made with nettle. Um, I said earlier on that there are, have been, it hasn't, wasn't only just that um, nettle was revisited at the First World War, mm. um, since then there have been some designers all across Europe who have looked at using yeah. nettle and there's an organisation called STING, the Sustainable Textile Innovation Group, <laughs> who are um, um, in growing nettles who are mm -hmm. um, looking at a number of fibres. So it's not just, I mean, we, we really need yeah. to be looking at diversification mm -hmm. um, to try and um, take away all the, the, the tension and mm -hmm. all the kind of the, the focus on yeah. cotton. Um, so what was I saying? Mm -hmm. Sting, an organisation who mm -hmm. are looking at um, mm -hmm. developing fibres. So mm -hmm. we're going to look at some clothes. Um, this is a very kind of rustic piece of fabric. That's what the very kind of first um, mm. level of what you might expect from um, a processed nettle um, to a finished item. But, you know, there's no reason why um, nettle, like any other process, couldn't be something that is, um, has a lot of development mm -hmm. and research built around yeah. it, funding, government support. Yeah which will then mean that we can develop the right species and the right mechanical yeah. ways of um, processing. Yeah, maybe it wouldn't take much, yeah, it just, it just requires a bit of government backing and yeah. a bit of research money. And yeah, I mean, much. well, when cotton was um, introduced, there was a whole lot of um, shenanigans about which kinds of machines actually mm -hmm. um, yeah. managed to um, yeah. deal with the husks and remove what was needed to refine mm -hmm. the, the Fibre. Scotland's got a great history of, of obviously weaving, spinning, so you know it yeah. sort of ties in with that, doesn't it? We're also hugely patient. We put <laughs> up with a lot of disappointment, so we, yeah. we really know how to um, stick with something. So, yeah. um, so I was going to look at um, while European nettles haven't so far been exploited or explored in this way. Um, rame is a fabric that mm. is made from Chinese nettle and um, that has been looked at for quite a while so I think we've got a garment that's um, a dress yeah so that's oh. a very kind of fine um, yeah so that's quite a leap for them from a soldier's uniform to a fine yeah it's because you could still imagine a soldier's uniform would be quite um, mm -hmm. 
rough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So back to the properties of um, nettles. Some of the things that are wonderful about it is that each nettle fiber is hollow. Mm -hmm. So it's got fantastic mm -hmm. insulating mm -hmm. properties. It's very good for keeping out the cold mm -hmm. and for letting out heat as well. So it's good for heavy garments and also good for very light southern garments. Mm. And it's just even a, a building you know, material could it be? Yeah. Uh, natural insulation perhaps? Yeah, you know, they use sheep's yeah. wool for insulation. Yeah. So. There's no reason why mm. this couldn't, an infrastructure couldn't be built mm. around this. There is another organisation, is it called Camry? K C A M R I Camry, and they make a lot of um, nettle fabrics for um, furnishings. Okay. Yeah. So this this is not something mm -hmm. so entirely new, but it is mm -hmm. something that's quite neglected, yeah. and it, it would make absolute sense for Scotland mm -hmm. and, and other small nations to look at mm -hmm. um, how we could um, mm -hmm. grow this in small yeah. area, in areas and. Um, Start to produce so much potential, them. you know, and there's a lot of talk just now, especially with the pandemic, about going over to a more green economy after, and you know the the new uh, reality, um, and you know these are the kind of things I think we should maybe be focusing on, um, and I, I think people don't realise the environmental costs of of clothing, you know, yeah. like plastics, a big thing, you know, air pollution, whatever the the food we eat, but I don't, I don't think clothing's got that such a media um, attention. No, perhaps. I think it's almost one of those invisible things because we tend to mm. wear clothes every day. Yeah. It's also something that tends to be associated with, oh, women are concerned with clothing, mm. but of course men mm. wear clothes too. Everybody wears mm. clothes. We yeah. need clothing. My wife have buys my, my clothes for me. Right. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> so, um, mm. yeah, so it is an area for... Sorry? I'm, I'm getting a message there. So anyway, I've kind of lost the thread now. So we are um, looking at garments made of mm -hmm. nettles. And um, Sorley has um, managed to do a few stitches. And if we go back yes. to the um, <laughs> fibre that gets produced mm -hmm. from nettle, this is what the fibre should end up looking like. So, so it's pretty not, soft by not, that point. Not jaggy and not rough jaggy, as you'd expect. Not jaggy at all. Yeah. I mean, that's if you can maybe hand me over the, I've got a flax sample as mm -hmm. well, so that's a flax sample. You can see they, they look slightly different mm -hmm. and they're slightly, they feel slightly different. Um, and is there something people could be doing at home themselves? I mean, yeah, okay, you know. I mean, it's not, I'm not proposing that people start growing um, their own patch mm -hmm. of nettles and start um, knitting nettle suits, <laughs> but certainly it's something that you could experiment uh -huh. with, and it's really good to connect and realise yeah. this is where our materials come from, this is how we get them. Yeah. Um, and Sorley is in action at this very moment, um, he's managed to make a piece of thread. Do you want to come up and yeah, have a show look at this? Um, you can try about carding as well. Yeah. There we go. Not bad. Fantastic. <laughs> Um, one of the other things that happened during the war was that um, silk stockings, we couldn't get silk stockings. This is one of these famous things that America could still get access to silk stockings, but in Britain they couldn't. So there was a lot of, um, thank you very much, that's very beautiful stitching as well, mm -hmm. sorely. I'm impressed. Do you want to do some carding in the meantime? Um, so silk was impossible, mm -hmm. and it was much the same way as yeah. cotton was, and so nylon was developed. But nylon, of course, comes is a plastic. Mm -hmm. Nylon is yeah. plastic, yeah. and it's it tends to be the component that's put in with wool to make wool very durable. Mm -hmm. But in fact, this fiber is incredibly durable. It is at least mm -hmm. as strong as nylon, mm -hmm. and it could be one of those things that. Um, um, reduces our need for cotton mm. or wool and we can mix it with other fibres. It's very... So stronger than cotton then? It's, 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 it's as strong as, as nylon. Well, yeah. So it's yeah. pretty convincing uh, argument then, yeah. isn't it? I well, know it, is, it's, it really is a bit yeah. of a wonder fibre and um, I would say the reason that it's not been... the t attention has been swung away from it is because there's been far too much that's been invested in the cotton yeah. industry. A lot of people place a lot of money Vested interest, vested yeah, interest yeah. in cotton. 
Okay. So what's, what's the next process then after the, the carding? Okay, so um, Sorley is busy carding away. And as I say at the end, I mean, he's quite close. It doesn't actually take that long. And if you could imagine that as a mechanical process, um, Sorley, do you want to go up to the camera and just show up close what that looks like? So we then, um, we've got a big bundle here, that's the main camera, of the, um, the, the nettle fibres. And I'm going to basically show you how to do some spinning. My spinning is terrible, so I really must apologise to people who are very skilled at this. Well, you don't have a proper spinning wheel for yeah, a start. I've, um, <laughs> <laughs> I've made a very basic spindle out mm -hmm. of a couple of CDs and a stick and a hook. And um, in Paleolithic times, um, people would sit doing this and they would um, use spit. And the reason for that was that um, it released mm -hmm. the pectin in the nettle fibres, okay. which helped them to mm -hmm. wind together. So that's basically spinning. Um, and you end up with a fibre, a yarn. It looks like this. It just looks like a typical yeah. woolen yarn that yeah, we're going to use to see. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. as I say, that has potential to be mm -hmm. something that is refined. And did I say before it was known as the silk of the north? Yeah, I think yeah, you did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which says it all. Um, yeah. It was it yeah. was considered a really kind of it mm -hmm. was for very wealthy or high people yeah. high. Yeah, the complete society. opposite of, of what people What you imagine assume. it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's fascinating, yeah. And this is my um, knitted sample. So, <laughs> from this jaggy stuff to this. And what's that going to become? Yeah. Well, <laughs> <We get plans. laughs> I mean, we could start a community project, Peter, and have everybody mm -hmm. produce a and square like this, and then um, we join them together for a blanket, well, and then... It's phase and two of the yeah, exactly. project. Yeah. Then world domination <laughs> of nettles. So, yeah. And it, it, it's a very warm fibre, as I say. Mm -hmm. Okay, where are we for time? Two minutes. Left? We're done. Phew. Okay, so I thought we would just quickly tie up. Um, did we look at the track bags? Wanted to have a little look at the track bags. Um, Scottish designer Alec Farmer. He's been making these bags, um, again, not all um, nettle fibre, but a combination of nettle and wool or nettle mm -hmm. and cotton yeah. to make a really durable um, fabric for making bags. And mm -hmm. he's um, Glasgow based. Mm -hmm. So lots of designers working in mm -hmm. this way and exploring it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you certainly opened my eyes. I mean, it's clearly a wonder plant. I mean, there's no, you know, getting away from the fact that it's a super plant. and. Uh, a super food, a super fabric, you know, fiber. Um, it's all the all these things, and uh, you know, I think, I guess anyone watching this will hopefully have their eyes open that when they're walking past what we think is weeds and and horrible jaggy plants, that actually it could be the next big yeah, thing. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we are seeing the rise of other fibers like bamboo, and um, there are other fibers we looked at made from pineapple, banana skin, yeah. algae. Um, this is just one possibility and in terms of um, what happens now with the cotton industry because it's, it's so problematic because so much of our clothing is made of mm -hmm. it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's absolutely the model yeah. item that um, the solution is not that we all start growing nettles or we all start growing pineapples mm -hmm. and making mm -hmm. um, fabric from those but that there's a lot more diversification and lots and yeah. lots of small businesses and for those to happen Really, we need to have some kind of infrastructure and support, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we need people to be much more aware. Maybe when they see something that's made of bamboo fibre mm -hmm. or something that's made of nettle fibre, that they think, okay, I'm going to give that a go, I'm going to buy that. Um, and as usual, at the beginning, those things tend to be more expensive, and then as things move on, mm -hmm. it becomes more yeah. commonplace, yeah. the price goes down. Um, yeah. I was also going to talk about 
um, I think that was it, Remode. So just mm -hmm. to tie off, in mm -hmm. the last year Remode has been working with um, Garnet Connections mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. with Peter and we've been looking at a rewilding project and that's mm -hmm. um, one of the projects that you can see online at the Remode website. Um, it's called Garnet Connections and mm -hmm. um, that's an ongoing project. Yeah. And we did some walks where we went out drawing and collecting seeds, flower heads, and then mm -hmm. taking those seeds and taking them to other areas in order to spread and rewild those wildflowers to other yeah. areas of um, the Garnet Valley. So look out on Remote's uh, website for our upcoming workshops. Come to our shop. We have a token system where you can bring in clothes you don't wear anymore, you earn tokens and you can spend them on our vintage trail. And also, Peter, are there any other th projects you'd like to tell us about? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, as I say, um, you mentioned Garnet Connections. Well, our, our project's called Growing for Garnet, so it's all about um, kind of introducing people to the wild plants and flowers and, and trees that uh, are to be found in our local environment. So I suppose, especially during these kind of lockdown times, you know, people are, I think, becoming more um, involved locally and also, um, you know, becoming more familiar and, and, and uh, with, our, with our local environment. We're not able to kind of travel so far. And, but I think that's been a good thing. Um, so our project kind of fits very nicely with that. So, yeah, it's all about um, education, it's about plant identification and understanding what uses even plants uh, were, were naturally put to. And so this, the, the nettles, ties in beautifully with that. Um, so there's lots of volunteering opportunities. We work with a lot of volunteers to help us collect seeds, um, to help us propagate. We're, we're even engaged with volunteers now working at home, helping us to sow seeds or prick out seedlings. Um, which is a great way of engaging people where perhaps they can't come to, to our nursery uh, or an, uh, other um, facilities. So there are plenty of opportunities and then of course planting those back into the environment. So we're, we're all about enhancing uh, local sites, ha creating ha new habitats and basically you know greening up and enhancing the, the Garnet Valley which is what this wider um, Garnet Connections project is all about. And it's been great working with Remode. Um, you know, you, you, you've provided a really interesting kind of artistic slant on, on the wildflowers and people have been producing wonderful drawings and, and um, you've created a, a lovely exhibition showcasing all that work. So that's been a really nice, interesting sort of component yeah. uh, to the project. So um, I thank you for that. Okay. So yeah, yeah and you've opened my eyes to, to nettles, so that's, that's for sure. Yeah, that's I think it. we've got a couple of questions that have come in. Yeah. Um, how easily does the nettle fibre take on dye? Right, okay. This is one of the supposed um, downsides of nettles that it is not as receptive to dyes as um, for example cotton but it can be mixed with um, other materials and when it's dyed it creates a strange kind of mottled look fabric which has a, a, its very own quality mm -hmm. um, also the fact that nettle in itself can be used as a natural dye mm -hmm. um, it, yes it's, it's less receptive to dyes than um, traditional cotton or nylon but we have spent an awful long time and an awful lot of investment in developing aniline dyes and acid dyes to to create the colours that we have yeah. in our cotton and polyester and nylon clothing so I've no doubt we could do a similar thing with um, nettles. And um, where do you get the nettles from? Nettles grow everywhere. Where do I get my nettles <laughs> from? I've got a very secret location. No, I don't. Nettles grow everywhere. They tend to grow um, in kind of places that are derelict, where people have lived previously. Yeah, yeah. And they tend to that's denote true. that has been a settlement in the yeah. past or a building that's going to um, tumble down. Um, where my knowledge fails is I don't know how much um, work would be involved in developing the right kind of strain or um, mm. looking at different species. But my understanding is that European nettles are less easy to grow than the other types. And yet, here we are. I guess anybody here could probably think of somewhere where they mm. know that nettles grow, even in, in the city. <laughs> yes, <laughs> in your back garden, in the yeah. city. And, um, yeah, well, they're, they're everywhere. They don't have to come from a particular place. Mm. Okay. Um, any more questions? No. 
Phew. Thank you very much, um, Sorley. Let's see what you've done with your... Um... Did yeah, you find yeah. that hard work? Yeah. Yes. So you don't fancy being a full-time carder? No. <laughs> Dang. I thought I could get away with them. Um, meager wages. <laughs> okay, um, thank you very much. I hope it's been an enlightening session. Thank you, Peter, for Pleasure. keeping me on it's track. Been fascinating for me, and so thank you for yeah. joining us. Great. Bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah.